Drifto is a casual mobile drifting game. The levels are procedurally generated, creating theoretically infinite roads. I built a couple of algorithms to do this. One works with angles and tries to steer the road away from itself, as explained in the other road generation video, but I think the more interesting method is the one based on a grid. To create the road, the controller has a handful of preset rectangular road sections. Each section has a size, a local entry and exit position, and direction, all measured in grid cells. The controller coordinates the process of stitching these together to make the road. There are three main challenges to this. Choosing when to place a new piece and destroy the old. Choosing what piece to place and aligning the new piece. Rather than having one large, overcomplicated class, the controller delegates these three responsibilities to other classes. The gate, the chooser and the aligner. Choosing when to place the next piece is done very simply. The gate determines what piece of road the player is on and checks how many more pieces have been generated ahead. If this is less than some predefined value, more need to be created. Choosing when to remove old sections is done similarly. The gate finds the road piece the player is on, and for each piece behind it, if it is too far, it should be removed. To determine where the player is, a ray cast is done straight down from the player's position. The chooser is where the meat of the system lives. In choosing the next road piece to place, the chooser will first sort the sections by how desirable they are. This is currently the inverse of how many of the given pieces in the world. The chooser will return the first valid section from this ordered list. A section is considered valid if it does not guarantee future road sections to overlap within a certain number of pieces placed after it. This could be reworded as a section is invalid if placing it guarantees an overlap within a certain number of future pieces placed after it. It really just avoids shooting itself in the foot. I picture it like you're playing Snake. Sometimes there are moves that do not cause you to lose in that turn, but guarantee you will in a few. That's the situation this algorithm avoids. The algorithm used to check whether a piece is valid boils down to depth first search. First, the chooser checks whether the piece in question will overlap with any of the current pieces in the world. If it does, it's invalid. If it doesn't, the chooser then tries to find a combination of x future pieces after it that are valid, where x is some predefined number of pieces. This is implemented recursively. In short, given the list of current road sections, available road sections to choose from, and how many more pieces forward it should check, it will return whether it's valid or not. For each available piece, if adding it onto the end of the road, defined by the list of current road sections does not cause any overlap, a call is made to the recursive function with the instantiated version of the available piece added to the current list, and with the number of forward pieces to check decreased by one. Otherwise, the next available piece is checked. At the start of the method, the counter is checked. If this ever gets to zero, then a valid combination is found and that can be propagated back by returning true. If the end of the method is ever reached, that means there are no road sections that could be placed without causing overlap. False should be returned. If the first call to the recursive function returns false, that means every combination of road sections have been checked and none are valid. If it returns true, that means we have found a valid combination and this road piece is valid. This can be visualized as searching a maze with no loops. At each intersection, take the leftmost path. Once a dead end is found, return to the most recent intersection and take the leftmost unexplored path. If you backtrack to an intersection that you've already searched all paths from, backtrack to the intersection before that one. The result of this will either be ending up at the exit or back at the start of an impossible maze. In the case of road generation, the road section choices are the intersections, and the dead ends are invalid pieces. Since the principle is the same, the snake game analogy still works, but is a little less obvious than the maze one. Instead of choosing what path to take, you choose whether to go left, straight, or right. A dead end is one where you eat your own tail, and the exit is just knowing that you'll survive for at least a certain number of moves after this one. The alignment of the road sections is super easy. Just rotate, then move the section such that the start position of the new one is the same as the end position of the last one. Although we've delegated all the big tasks, the grid row controller isn't completely off the hook. Since I don't want to create and manage original and flipped versions of each road section, I get the grid road controller to manage that for me. On startup, the controller instantiates all of the road sections and flipped versions. These are then used when instantiating new sections rather than the prefabs themselves. Aside from this, 
the controller just delegates the tasks to the helper classes. In building the system, I was having trouble with pieces overlapping and it was an absolute nightmare to debug, as recursive systems often are. So a tool I made to help determine the root of the problem was what I call debug panels. Giant panels in the sky that reflect the grid. Using this, I was able to diagnose myself with monkey brain and fix the information about the road sections. The big problem with this algorithm is its computational complexity. To check whether just one piece is valid, the worst case computational complexity is the available sections to the power of pieces to check. Plugging some numbers in, we can see just how quickly this blows up. To help keep performance in check, this algorithm is run at the final stage of choosing the next piece, so usually only a couple of times per road section. And not a conscious choice, but just a fact of where the game is in development, the number of possible pieces is still low, further minimising the potential impact. The number of pieces forward to check is also set to a low value, currently just 5. Although on a track with only 5 possible road sections, in the worst case this is still over 15,000 combinations to check. To improve the performance, I could stagger the calculations over multiple frames, given there is usually a few seconds between each road section generation. However, in Drifto this is no longer the bottleneck so I'm not yet implementing this.